So we did a major study that looked at all of the research on learning and teaching in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, in the undergraduate years. And we actually know quite a bit about how students learn and the best ways to teach. But the study also found that there was a big gap between what the research suggested and what was actually happening in classrooms. So we wanted to try to do something about that. Our original study report was fairly technical, so we decided to do a book that took the findings from that report and included some case studies that showed how it can look in classrooms when you're actually implementing effective practices based on research. So science, engineering, technology, and math, sometimes referred to as the STEM fields, are increasingly important in society. So careers in those fields are booming, but in addition in our daily lives, we often need to understand science to make daily decisions about our health, about our diet, about whether we buy those energy efficient windows. Um, we also know that at the undergraduate level, we're not doing as good a job as we should be in educating students in the STEM fields particularly in the first two years of undergraduates, sometimes a course and the way it's taught will actually turn a student off to science or engineering. And so we need to do something about that and the research on learning gives us some insights about what to do. It's especially important to improve instruction if we want to broaden the range of people who are attracted to careers in the STEM fields. Women, underrepresented minorities, often are turned off to science, technology, engineering, and math if they feel they can't get access to it in a classroom. We know more than ever before about how students learn science and engineering, and we know a lot about the kinds of instructional practices that are best for supporting their learning. Those are going to require some changes to how instruction currently happens in undergraduate science classrooms, but it's possible. And there are faculty who are making those changes now with exciting results for students. It's important to start small and don't try to change everything at once. To also focus on the learning goals that you have for students and seek out like-minded colleagues who are also trying to improve the instruction that they undertake in their classrooms. Working together, it's really possible to implement some of these research-based approaches and improve learning for students in your classrooms.